Hello guys, welcome back. This is Deepika from mytutorialrack.com and in this tutorial we will talk about validation rule. Now what are these validation rule? Validation rule are basically help you to verify your data before you save that data in your database. So if you want to make sure that the data that the user is entering is not a bad data, it's not some junk information, then you can create those validation rules. So if you remember when we were creating a field, there was always a checkbox like required. If you want to make the field required is that whenever you want to create a new record, that particular field value is required. That is a kind of a validation rule that is available. But besides that, there are other ways that you want to make sure that the information the user is entering is a valid data. For example, we on our candidate object, we have two fields. One is the first name field and then the other one we have is the last name. So you want to make sure that whenever user enter information in these two fields, it should always be a valid character, right? It should never be one numbers, one to whatever numbers should not be allowed in that field. And also like symbols like special characters like at and these are not should not be allowed in the first name and the last name. So that when user is trying to enter bad data, they should be thrown an error message and they should not allow the data to be saved, correct? So validation rules verify that the data entered by the users in records meet the standards you have specified before they can save the record. So you will never have bad information getting into your database. You are checking up front before even the data has been getting saved into your database. That's one of the examples. So let's say, if you're entering in our on our position object, you have fields like min pay and max pay, right? You always want to make sure that min pay is less than the max pay. If somebody is trying to enter anything min pay more, then you should throw them an error message right away that, hey, the data that you're entering is a bad data, right? There will never be a scenario where the minimum pay would be greater than maximum pay. So you want to make sure that the data, whenever you're somebody trying to add something invalid, then you should throw them an error message and you should prevent them from saving into the database. So validation rules help you to do that. And we will be creating lots of validation rules and you will get a good hands-on practice on how to create them. So a validation rule can contain a formula or expression which will evaluate it to either a true value or a false value. And if that comes out to be true, then what will happen? That means that there is an invalid value. So you will write a formula or something of that sort which will result into either true or false. So that basically you are writing the formula for the error. So if, the, if that formula comes out to be true, that means there is a invalid data and that's when you can display an error message to the user. Validation rules can also include error message to display to the user when they enter invalid values based on a specific criteria. Basically, it helps you to have some quality data. You don't want some bad data. You don't want somebody's birthday to be way past year 1900, right? Because right now we are in 2021, even if you consider 110 as the maximum year a person is going to live, you should not go past that date for your birthday, right? So that's kind of, if you're somebody who's trying to enter a birth year as 1900, that means it's an invalid data. It's a bad data. You don't, you should not allow it to enter into your database. So you want to throw an error message right before they're trying to save something like that. So validation rules will come out handy. So for example, you want to ensure that the phone number fields contain a specified format or that discounts applied to certain products never exceed a defined percentage. Validation rules are very, very helpful when you want to have a quality data, when you want to, to make sure that the data the user is entering is up to the mark, is up to your standards, and you want to protect bad data getting into your database because it costs you money to save information, right? So you want to make sure that the information that you are saving is valid information. So you want to prevent somebody to entering invalid data right there itself before even you passing to the next layer because you don't want any junk in your database. So you can create validation rules and you can enter what criteria you want to do it. And if that criteria does not meet, then you're going to get an error that you want to throw it to the user, which will tell the user that you're trying to enter something invalid. 
So what we're going to do here is in our next tutorial, we are going to create some of the validation rules for our application. So you can create as many validation rules, but for the simplicity, we are going to start with few. The first validation rule we are going to create is the minimum pay cannot be greater than the maximum pay. That is a valid scenario, right? You don't want your uh, minimum pay to ever be greater than the maximum pay, right? If your minimum pay is 70K, maximum pay should always be greater than 70K, okay? And if somebody is trying to enter something invalid or something like 70K and then in the minimum pay, their maximum pay, they're entering 50K, you should not allow this to be entered into your system. So that's why we're going to create a validation rule to make sure the minimum pay cannot be greater than the max pay. Then the second thing is I want to do is whenever a position status is closed, then the close date is required. So I don't, I haven't made the close date as a required field, but whenever the position status is changed to closed, I want to make sure that the user enters the close date as well. So otherwise they should get an error that, hey, you have to enter a close date or whenever the status is changed to closed, you should always provide the close date. Then another thing is if they have provided the close date, it should always be after open date, right? If your position is opened today, then your close date should always be after today, right? You can't have that the position opened on May 11th. 2021 and your close date is showing as May 9th, 2021. That's never possible, right? Because close date should always be after open date. So that's another scenario you want to make sure that the data doesn't get corrupted. Maximum K cannot be more than 1 million. So let's just to add another validation, we want to make sure that the maximum pay should not exceed 1 million. If they are trying to enter some information which is like 10 millions or 1 billion it should give you an error message that hey maximum pay cannot be 1 million more than 1 million that's another validation rule that we are going to add another thing is if you remember on the candidate object we added two check boxes one was for are you a u.s citizen and the other one was for visa required okay so Imagine that, okay, we are in United States and all the positions are open in United States and either the, you, it'll, the candidate is going to be a U.S. citizen or candidate will need a visa required. You can't have U.S. citizen checkbox checked and visa required checked because if you're in this country, if you're a U.S. citizen, you don't need the visa. So you want to make sure that only one of these is checked. Okay, not both. Either it's U.S. citizen or visa required. It can never be both. And you candidate have to provide one of these. Okay, so it either U.S. citizen has to be checked or visa required has to be checked. And if visa required is checked, then user, U.S. citizen cannot be checked. If both of these cannot be true at the same time. So we want to make sure that if the candidate is user U.S. citizen, then, then visa required should be unchecked and if the candidate needs a visa, then this should be unchecked. And if you're trying to check both the values, then you should get an error message trying to do something like this. So that's the set of validation rules we will start working on from our next tutorial. So I'll see you then. Thank you.